Okay, I'd like to present some work that uh, myself, uh, my colleague David Young, and our advisor uh, Andy Gill have done at the University of Kansas. Uh, we're using GHC compiler extensions uh, to uh, rewrite uh, shallow DSLs to deep DSLs and, and do some other transformations. So we're doing this around Haskino, and Haskino is a uh, uh, embedded domain-specific language uh, designed to allow you to program uh, uh, Arduino microcontrollers uh, using a, a monadic uh, Haskell expressions instead of C, at least some, somewhat close to idiomatic Haskell, uh, instead of the, uh, the, the uh, traditional imperative C that we would use uh, that's distributed with, with uh, Arduinos as an SDK. And beyond that, we also use it as a test bed. We're using it as a test bed for our, some of our transformation techniques. So we've, you know, we also hope to do some stuff around GPUs and FPGAs, but, but uh, uh, the Arduino work has kind of been our first effort at it. So when we started Haskino, um, we started, the first thing we created was a, was a, a shallow domain-specific language uh, that, that the user could program in on, on the uh, host in Haskell. And uh, we have a firmware interpreter that was written that runs on the Arduino. It's a bytecode interpreter uh, that uh, uh, can, can execute the results that are, uh, we, we translate the shallow AST uh, into bytecode and send it over a, a tethered connection, uh, USB serial connection to the Arduino. Uh, and we're doing that with a, a, a library we've developed at, at uh, KU called the Remote Monad Library. Uh, details of that aren't really important to this part of the talk, but. But needless to say, the run function of that monad is, is what does the send. So it's what, it, what translates it into bytecode and sends it over to the, uh, the serial connection. And that provides a nice uh, interactive programming environment that the user can use to, to, to program the Arduino. Uh, it has fairly fast turnaround, uh, but it also has some downsides in that, you know, the results of one particular computation may be passed back to the host and then, uh, you know, uh, bound into another computation. And so there's, the, the performance is not very good. So, so the first step we took uh, uh, to alleviate that was is to, to move to a deeply embedded DSL. So now uh, we, we modified or we, we extended the, the DSL on the host side uh, and created a deep version of it. Uh, and we also extended the interpreter to be able to handle uh, the expression language that we had to put in there to do that to make it a deeply embedded uh, DSL. And uh, now we can not send just single computations but whole bundles of computations um, across and at least, at least first, we, we left it within the, the tethered connection. Now, uh, we did even, in the interpreter, was able to store bytecode uh, in EEPROM and, and execute there, so we could actually break the tether with this, but we still weren't very performant. Um, uh, it was running through a, a bytecode interpreter, so we really wanted better performance. Uh, so the next step was to move to a, uh, a different version of interpreting the AST. Uh, instead of running it and sending it across the, uh, the uh, serial link, uh, we we uh, 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 reified it in a different way uh, into a transcompiler and generated C code out of it, uh, and we have a, a small runtime that goes with it. Uh, and I guess what I didn't say, one other part that's not real important for this talk, but the, uh, one of the things that we did add in this stage was we added, uh, we actually have the ability to do multitasking as well within the interpreter, uh, and that's maintained in the C code, and that's kind of really that and some of the uh, expression language for things like lists or what's handled in the runtime. Um, so now we had, had a performant uh, uh, implementation. Uh, it was a much better performance, but, but uh, one of the other issues is, is those of you who have written both shallow and deep uh, DSLs, uh, for the user, it was, it's, it's really much nicer to write than a shallow DSL. They can write much more idiomatic Haskell. They can, they can use uh, uh, conditional constructs that are basic to, to Haskell. They don't have to use something that's, that's a conditional uh, construct in deep language and, and not as easy to write. Uh, so what we want to do for the final step is we've taken and created a GHC plugin, which allows us to take the shallow DSL syntax and, and translate that AST into a deep AST and then use it with the compiler. Uh, and the other benefit now is we have one source language uh, that the user can use to do uh, prototyping uh, and quick turnaround with an interpreter and then have it compiled uh, into C uh, for actual execution. So here's an example of the, of the Haskell or Haskino language. It's a real simple example. In this case, we've got just uh, a, a little example with two, uh, two buttons and an LED. Uh, but we can see some of the primitives. Here we've got digital read. It takes the value of a pin that the button's connected to uh, and returns a Boolean as the button pressed or not. Uh, and then we the same thing. We have a digital write. We can output uh, to a pin which the LED is connected to. In this simple case, we just say if either button is pressed, we, we light the LED. 
we delay and then we go back through uh, and loop again. And the, the, uh, the DSL has a, a, a infinite loop construct. I'm gonna talk a little bit later in the talk about recursion and we also wanna handle the ability to, to write recursively. Uh, but for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to use the uh, infinite loop construct here just to make it simpler uh, to present one idea at a time. So I said we, we moved from the shallow embedding to a deep embedding, uh, and, and you don't have to know a lot of uh, Haskell for this, but, but basically the shallow embeddings uh, take, use standard Haskell types. They use uh, a, 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 an 8-bit integer and uh, Booleans and then they return values well, within the Arduino monad, so they're effectful. Uh, they have, in this case, they have an effect out in the, in the hardware. Uh, a write re returns a unit, an analog read returns a 16-bit word that, that tells you what the uh, value of that pin is. Um, to go to the deeply embedded version then, we lifted these standard Haskell types into an expression type, uh, so that way we're able to, to uh, embed the comp computation and, and be able to transfer the full computation, sequences of computations to the remote uh, device, uh, and so we can see there we've got uh, uh, expressions of the word eight and expressions of Boolean, and, when the, and then we return expressions uh, within the Arduino monad uh, for the uh, for, for the, uh, the uh, deep versions. And mainly because of where we came from, how we developed this, uh, the uh, the monad is, monads for both the shallow and the deep are the same. Uh, they wouldn't have to be. You could have one, you know, the, uh, they could be, the, the transformations that we're gonna, I'm gonna describe could be, could be uh, handled uh, if the, the monads were different. So we're gonna do these transformations with a worker wrapper uh, as a base transformations. And in general, if you have a function that has a body and you wanna apply a worker wrapper transformation to it, uh, you can, can, uh, can uh, have your work, you can wrap uh, a function work, which itself is, is an unwrapping of the, the original body. Uh, and this allows us to move uh, between, with unwrap and wrap, between the uh, uh, two types A and B. Uh, in our specific case, we want to move between the base uh, Haskell types and the expression types in our deep language. Uh, and we do that using rep, which is the equivalent of a lit. And you know, we've, we heard a, a speaker yesterday talk about lightweight modular staging and use the same, uh, same uh, uh, vernacular for, for the, uh, the rep. And then apps is the reverse, uh, so it will correspond to the evaluation of the expression uh, to move back and forth between those. So to do the transformations, what we want to do is, uh, so here, I'm sorry, here's the, here's the shallow version, uh, which we saw before, and here's the deep version that we want to get to. Uh, and to do that, we need to replace the, uh, we see we've replaced uh, the, the primitives. We also see that we've also lifted the, uh, the constants, and I've, I've left the let statements out of this example but the uh, constants we had for the button values and the LED values of the pins uh, and the delays, et cetera. So the first step we want to do to do this, and, and the idea here in general is we're going to insert these worker wrapper uh, functions, and then we're going to move them around, manipulate them in the code, and the idea is to eventually eliminate most of what we've inserted uh, and then leave ourselves with the, with the deep language that we want. So the first step in doing that uh, is to, uh, to transform the primitives uh, the digital reads and writes and, and the delays we talked about. Uh, and so to do that, uh, we can see here we've got the digital write, uh, and that goes, or I'm sorry, digital read and goes to a digital read, the expression version of it. Uh, we need to insert a rep to be able to lift that constant value up. So each of the parameters to the uh, primitives have a rep put on them. And then we want to maintain the type uh, to be the same. So this, the type of, of this expression here, the digital read button one, we want to keep that, that type the same down here. So we have to F map an, an abs on the front. Uh, to, to, to maintain that type, so we're gonna we'll potentially evaluate the, uh, uh, the, uh, the expression when it came back. And so we, we do that with each of the primitives, and that gets us to the, through the first step, so we translate those. And then we wanna transform some of the operations. So we have operations within the, the expression language that we've defined, uh, in this case, the logical or. So if we have a case where we have rep of a uh, uh, expression with one of those operators inside, uh, we have a rule that says we can be able to take uh, the rep of each of the operators or each of the parameters of that operator and then change the type of the operator. So we're going to use, this is the, uh, the logical or operator in our expression language as opposed to the, the straight Haskell one. Um, and then, you know, like I said, we want, the idea is we want to eliminate these abs and reps. So we want to get them closer to each other because uh, if you take the abs of a rep of an expression, you'll just get the expression back. So that would be like, uh, evaluating, lifting that into the, uh, the expression language. Uh, so, and 
right now, these rules that, that, that I'm gonna describe here are, you know, are kind of dependent on the monadic nature of our DSL. Uh, and you know, we, we envision them also being, you know, probably have a similar set of rules for using non-monadic uh, DSLs as well. Um, and in this case, we're gonna use a variant of the third monad law. That's, we'll go into a lot of details about that as far as if, if you're not familiar with Haskell and monads. Uh, but in general, if you've got uh, uh, an abs f mapped onto a function, which is then bound to a continuation, you can translate that into the function bound to the continuation composed with the abs. So it allows us to move the abs that we have here uh, through the binds, and they, they appear as continuate or as uh, co compositions here at the uh, the end. So that's that's our first step in that transformation, and then we want to move them inside the lambdas. Um, so if we are if we uh, change the type of the lambdas. Uh, here we move A to A prime. We're able to replace the A here with an abs of A and eliminate the abs from the, the composition on the end. So this gets us to the point where we have the rep and the abs right next to each other and allows us to take the next step, which is to uh, fuse those reps and abs together. So as we said, I said before, rep of abs of A is simply A. So we're able to eliminate those and if we get down here, we'll see that we're actually at the stage where that's what the, uh, if we had handwritten the, uh, the deep DSL, uh, we're at the equivalent of that uh, after we get through the transform. And we handle conditionals in the same way. Um, and you might have a question, for those of you who are familiar with GHC, do we want to, why don't we just use, can, can we do all, do all these transforms within uh, GHC's rule language? Uh, some of them could be. Uh, so some of the, the four steps I went through before and some other ones uh, are able to be expressed by, as rules. But things like, one of the limitations of GHC's rules is that you can't, you have to have a function application on the left-hand side, and we don't have that uh, in the case of the conditionals, for example. Uh, so uh, conditionals, though, are handled, and, we, and if you look at the paper, uh, we use the rule syntax, even though in some of these cases we can't execute them as GHC rules, uh, the syntax is, is convenient for us to write in and, and, and describe our transformations, so we use that. Uh, and the conditional transformations are handled much like the, uh, uh, the primitives were. Uh, we're able to insert rep uh, in both the conditional and the lin and else branches, uh, uh, and then uh, fmap and apps in front. And this is the case for transforming the, uh, an if-then-else at the, at the at the top level DSL, at the level of the, uh, the Arduino monad. Uh, and then similarly, we have one that transfers and if then else at the expression level. So if we're just uh, have, having, taking, uh, where each of them, uh, each of the types is, a, uh, is an expression, uh, then we're able to translate that into the, uh, the DSL construct for if then else at the, at the monadic level and one also at the, uh, the expression level. So it allows us to do conditionals as well as uh, uh, other transformations. So, um, you know, our, our overall goal is to be able to, to, to uh, program the Arduino in a much more functional nature and not in, not in the imperative nature that we would, uh, would use with C. So we wanted to use Haskell and, uh, as a functional language uh, to program this. So, you know, we could, we, we could use iteration constructs and in fact the DSL has an iteration. Uh, and in fact, if you'll look through the history of papers on, on uh, Haskino, this isn't the first one we've used. This is what we've ended up to, to help enable the transformations. There were some other while uh, variants of the, uh, of the expression. Uh, in this case, we take the, the iteration operator takes an uh, initial value, and then the body of the iterator uh, takes a type of that initial value, uh, and then it returns an either, uh, either, either a value of the, that initial value type or a value of the return type. So this did require us to add an, an either to our, our DSL uh, expression language, uh, but uh, this, this iterate structure will, will uh, a lot, the form of that allows us to do the, uh, the type of transformation that we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about. So we would like to write, here's a simple example, we wanted to blink a light a, a certain number of times. Uh, and we'd like to write that in a recursive style as opposed to, to just straight using the, uh, the uh, imperative uh, iterate, iterate loop. So um, in this case, if, you know, if, the, if, uh, if the, uh, the value of the parameter is zero, we simply return unit. If not, we, we blink the light and we recursively call blink uh, and decrement the counter. So we'd like to, the user be able to write in this shallow uh, rec recursive style. Uh, and so to do that, I'm not gonna go through all of the steps. The paper uh, goes through the recursive transform uh, in much more detail. And I've, I've walked through uh, the, uh, the, the shallow to deep transformation uh, in, in a lot of detail. 
But in general, first thing we do is we, we move this to a, we, we do the shallow deep transformation we described. So this is the deep version. Uh, you can see we use the if-then-else primitive and we've gotten rid of the, the, uh, the uh, pattern matching. We've desugared that into a conditional. Um, and in this case, we can see where we would normally, where we would return uh, when we were gonna exit the loop, uh, we're returning a, uh, a unit and then we're gonna have a recursive call to, to uh, continue within the loop to continue to blink a certain, the specified number of times. So to do this transformation, and the paper goes through the steps, uh, there's similar uh, steps to moving uh, what, we've, what we'll refer to in the paper as, as done and step operators uh, through, the, uh, uh, through the code to be able to, uh, to, to get them to the form we want at the end. But basically what happens is that any place uh, we have a, um, uh, where we're actually gonna exit the loop, we're gonna return an expert of type right, an expert right that says we're gonna exit the loop, um, if we return an expr left, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make a recursive call back in, um, and, and uh, the, the uh, semantics of the iterate are such that, that you know, if you have right, if, you do, if it, it returns an expr right, it will exit. If it turns an expr left, it'll go through the loop one more time. Uh, and so the, the plugin's actually able to do this transformation uh, from, from the, uh, the deep uh, recursive form into uh, the iterate form that we can use inside the DSL. Now right now there are a couple limitations to our transform. Uh, this only does uh, functions of single parameter. Uh, we, could, we could eliminate the, the, that issue by adding tuples to the, uh, to the uh, DSL. And it also doesn't handle uh, mutually, so I, I guess I should have preceded all of this. This, is, this of course depends on tail recursive functions. Uh, we don't handle mutually tail recursive functions um, at the moment, that also could be solved by adding uh, a tuples to the DSL and reducing it to a, to a single uh, tail recursive function. So here's a little more uh, complicated example just to, to, uh, to demonstrate what we can do with the DSL going from a shallow to a deep. Uh, on the Arduino, there's a, uh, a uh, common shield which has an LC display and five buttons. Um, the five buttons are encoded into an analog input and depending on the range of the analog input you get back between zero and 1024, it'll tell you what button's pressed or that no button has been pressed. Uh, so here we, we could write that as a, uh, uh, a uh, recursive function which either returns a key value depending on the, the value of the, the input or it calls itself recursively until, uh, until a, a value is found uh, that indicates a key press. Uh, so this is what we, that's what we're gonna allow, we allow the user to write um, within uh, the DSL and this is what the, uh, the transform or the uh, or our transformation process in the plugin uh, results with for looking at the deep, deep DSL code. So when we do this as several passes uh, within, the, uh, within the plugin, uh, we've talked about a lot of the different uh, steps, you know, conditionals and the primitives. Uh, monadic returns are handled the same way as, as primitives are. Um, a couple of the other passes we haven't talked about was there's a local functions pass. So this allows us to handle multi multiple modules. So we can do, if we have more than one uh, Haskell module, instead of having put all this into one, func into one uh, file, we're able to handle multiple modules. And we do that by keeping around the shallow versions of the functions and rewriting them in terms of the deep. Uh, and the reason we do that is because the, uh, we, before, before we get uh, before the plugin gets control, you have to get past the initial GHC type checking. So we want to be able to type check the shallow versions of both files before we do transformation on that. And so when we get to the second one that's dependent on the first one, we have to have the shallow version still around or otherwise the GHC type checker isn't going to be able to type check that. Uh, but then doing it this way allows us to then, it, that type checks and then we're able to do the, uh, the transformations here as well. Um, and then the, uh, the rest of the passes we've, des we've described. Now some of these, like the, uh, the, uh, the rep push, which is where we do the operators and the EDSL primitives, uh, these are table driven, so they could be, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to, for any of the monadic, uh, any monadic DSL that would use our remote monad library could be changed to, uh, could be fairly easily modified to use that DSL um, as opposed to the Haskino one. And, uh, uh, thank you for your attention, and I'd be glad to take any questions. <laughs>